Welcome to a special edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. In remembrance of the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision, all this week, Andrew interviews Janet Porter, architect of the pro-life heartbeat bill and a courageous political ally in the fight for life. The heartbeat bill is a fresh, it's a new approach, it's a scientific solution to abortion, and, uh, and we do whatever it takes. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to a very special edition of our Gospel Truth broadcast. This week, we've got on my program Janet Porter, and this woman has been a force uh, of God in the political realm trying to end abortion. And I believe that we are going to see abortion ended in our lifetime. And a lot of it is due to this woman, Janet Porter. I'm going to be interviewing her, and I tell you, she's stronger than an acre of garlic. You will really enjoy this. And so we're going to uh, be continuing our interview with her. I encourage you to watch this. At the end of the program, we'll be giving you information about how you can get our product on Choose Life, which will include my interview with Janet, but also how you can get her product, her books, and go to her website. So watch this, and I'll be back at the end of the program. I'm interested in how you even got into all of this legislative stuff. I mean, uh, the viewers... Uh, if somebody out there is is passionate about this and yet they don't know what to do, I mean, they pray about it, but how do you get involved? How do you get to where you are involved in legislature? How did this well, come to pass? Well, you know, I, I think back and I was first writing my first book, uh, True to Life, and and I realized that I was in a class, like a big auditorium classroom setting in, in college, and uh, they were saying, what are the biggest problems in America? And people would say homelessness, and somebody shouted abortion. And they're writing all these other problems down, and I realized, you know, I didn't have the courage to be the one to shout abortion, but I, I just said to a friend of mine next to me, seated next to me, I said, you notice he didn't write down on the board abortion. I just, I, it bothered me, but not enough to speak up, right? And uh, she said, well, we're, we're starting, we're just happened to, the, the person I'm sitting next to randomly just happened to be the one starting a pro-life group. And did I want to be involved in it? And I was an you know, officer the first year and president the second year. And, and, uh, and so I, I, got, I got out of my shell a little bit, went through the speaker's training, got hired uh, at Ohio Right to Life. Now, a speaker's training is what? It, it's, uh, it's, it's public speaking? Public speaking for the pro-life movement. Uh, a guy by the name of Tom Zaber was the one that came to my high school class. He and his wife, Cass, had a, had a uh, speaker's training. I went through it and they T taught you about it, what it is, and and I was I was terrible. I mean, I was really terrible at it. I get real emotional, you know. It's pathetic. So, can you give me a time frame on this, from like when that when you talked to this lady beside you to when you were actually like in front of the legislature? How long? Okay. Period well, of time? I I was uh, I was a kid who was afraid to speak up, sitting next to the woman who's starting the pro life group, and became a part of the pro life group. Went through the speaker's training after that, became president of Students for Life. Um, and then when they, when Right to Life saw the things I was doing on campus, they said, we want this girl to be our legislative director. Um, they, uh, they hired me. Once I got my master's, they hired me. Um, and then what I did is I didn't know anything about the legislature. I didn't know anything about, you know, I, I made a joke. We're going down to the steakhouse in the lobby of the steakhouse to lobby this. No, it's the steakhouse, state house, right? <laughs> it was, it was, uh, pretty pathetic. But I knew the issue because I had been trained. Yeah. And so I went there and, and, and met with these legislators. A lot of people are intimidated. If they knew these legislators that sit on these committees, they would not be intimidated by them at all. Um, because, uh, yeah, there, there's a lot that should not be serving in, uh, in that capacity. And that's why we need godly people to run for office. Mm -hmm. and so I ran for the state central committee and uh, against the secretary of the party. Uh, it was a, a, a long shot, uh, but we won um, because I was, I was part of the establishment then. You know, we're doing these little incremental bills. And I had the support of John Kasich supported me at the time. And Governor uh, DeWine was then senator. He's supported me. All the, all the statewide leaders all supported my little state central committee race. Uh, they thought it was impossible, um, but we won. Um, and so the thing is, when you actually want to end abortion and not just regulate around the edges of it, yeah. you're no longer in favor with the establishment because yeah. we're no longer working our tails off, asking almost nothing in return. Well, forgive me for breaking in again, but how long? A how period long? Is, I'm trying to help the people watching this. It was from college this. to, uh, see, it was 86 when I first started in the pro-life movement in the, as, as an officer at the uh, Students for Life, I was hired in 88 at Ohio Right to Life uh, and then worked till uh, 97 
Um, and so uh, I basically got immersed in it for a decade. Um, and so, yeah, just a short time. And I see that's real helpful. But so for uh, you just don't go from zero to a thousand all yeah, at one yeah. time. It, you have to. It seemed like up. it. But yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things. So where 10 years you were involved in the movement yeah. and stuff like this. Yes. And then when you how did you get focused on the heartbeat bill instead of incrementally Doing this. Well, I want to tell you a story, and it's it's an embarrassing one. Um, I was the kid out of college. I just started Rights of Life, like early '80s or late '80s, uh, early '90s, and I went to a conference. It was like '92, '93, uh, and it was in Chicago. It was a lot of legislators, much like our uh, National Association of Christian Lawmakers event, right? Mm -hmm. But there were people from all over the all over the country, and they were presenting how we can move a millimeter down the field at a time. And I remember this thing, it, I remember pitching it. You know, you, you have the sessions, and then you stand around, talk afterwards, a little social hour. And, and I said, well, we can do better than this. I mean, come on. This is not going to get, this is not going to save a handful of babies. Come on. I said, why don't we protect them? And at that time, I had an idea called the heartbeat bill. It was almost, it was 28 years ago, about 30 years ago. And I, I pitched this idea and I'm telling you something. I was surrounded by these legislators like piranhas. And they said, it can't be done. And they said, you know, look, I'm a judge and I'm a legislator and you're a kid out of college and you got a lot to learn, young lady. And I said, you know, the one thing I learned is that this approach that they were pitching is the only way to uh, to, to to regulate abortion uh, has left us with a body count of more than 60 million children. You know, people may have already picked this up talking to you, but reading the book and being around you just a couple of times, if you say it can't be done, that's just like saying sick them to a yeah. dog. Oh, that my. just somehow or another doesn't fit your personality. You know, that's it because it doesn't fit our God. Our God is the God of the impossible. You either believe it or you don't. Amen. And I say it off often, actions are what you believe. Everything else is religious talk. If you believe this book, the book of the Bible, if you believe that God is who he claims to be, then it's going to change how you live. It's going to change what you do. But I was I was right out of college. I was in my my twenties, and they they so berated me, so circled. So people were red in the face. Others were patting me on the back. Little naive little girl doesn't know how to you know. And I literally had that idea beaten out of me. And it wasn't until the death of my former boss at the wake when I realized, oh my goodness, that idea from from you know twenty years prior is now ten years ago. I I, I, I we need to do it, and we need to do it now. And, 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 and after you have been berated and beaten, every, every, every time I'd ever say, we can do more, there's something more, they'd all say, oh, it can't be done, it can't be done, it can't be done. And you're going to be in a meeting. Someone's listening. Someone's listening right now. They're going to say, you're in a meeting, and they're going to say, we've got way more experience, we've got way more knowledge, more education, and they're here to tell you, it just can't be done. Listen to us. We're the experts, right? Well, they need to meet my God. He's the God of the impossible. And so that's it. He either is or he isn't. And if he is, it's going to change what we do. You know, I think this is one of the reasons that Trump has been used so powerfully is because he came in and he wasn't held back that's by right. all of the things that can't be done. That's and right. he just turned everything upside down. He did. You know, in a sense, you're like that in the pro-life movement. You just came in and threw these incremental steps to the side. A lot of people didn't like it. And, and I'll tell you, in the Senate in particular, there were a lot of rhinos, Republican in name mm -hmm. only. These are folks that, that, that ran on pro-life promises, but never meant to keep them. They only want to regulate abortion. And so here's what we did. We ran against them. We, in three election cycles, ran against almost every single one of them. We filed candidates. And we didn't win because we didn't have the budgets they did, but we made them pay. We made them, it cost them. And so I remember specifically, uh, third cycle into this, third election cycle, two-year cycles, um, I was trying to get somebody to run against the guy who was going to be president of the Senate. And I, I'm just telling you, I brought in a pastor and his wife. We had him over for dinner. And I said, this is for such a time as this. I, I lobbied as hard as I could to get somebody to run and came up empty. And uh, I still remember the phone call I got from uh, my, my, my general in this, in this effort, Lori Viers. She called me up and she said, we've got a lot of good candidates filed this time, but uh, were you able to find anybody to run against the president of the Senate? I'm on the phone. And uh, I said, no. I said, boy, that would have been nice. And the lady on the cross the counter says to me, sign right here. And, and, and uh, so I signed. She says, where are you? Sign what? She said, where are you? I said, I'm at the Board of Elections. What are you doing? I'm filing to run against the president of the Senate because <laughs> actions are what you believe. You know, uh -huh. everything else is political talk, religious talk and talk. And so um, I, uh, I was told from some folks on the inside that they ran two polls where I actually was dead even with the president of the Senate. 
and they spent a boatload of money. I was told it was $1.3 million slandering me on every station, uh, the multiple nasty mailings saying I was the pro abort. I mean, they, they ran this on Christian radio. My niece is listening and they're saying, Janet Porter is a pro abort. I mean, it was, it was horrible. And she goes, they don't know Aunt Janet. I mean, this is what they do. They, they spend this money, they slander you beyond repair and, um, and, and there's nothing you can do because you're on the money. And there I'd go, remember going to a church and uh, speaking and a lady came up to me afterwards and said, I was, I, I believe their, their lies. If I hadn't met you today, I would have believed what they said. Um, but there's a lot of, of, of courage, uh, pastors with courage. John Bouquet is one of them. This is a guy in Ashland, Ohio. And uh, <laughs> all the other pastors, well, we really can't have you talk in our church. It's political. And that's just, we have to keep our hands off of it. Mm -hmm. he, he, this is what he did. He had, I walked, I knew I was in the right place. I walk in, there's a Janet Folger Porter yard sign as I walk in. And he says, you know, I really can't say who I'm voting for unless somebody asks me. And there's silence. He says, well, isn't it, here we are, the big congregation, isn't anybody going to ask me? Somebody <laughs> shouts, who are you voting for? And he says, Janet Porter. And so it's just, it's just, we need men of courage, you know? We you need, don't we have need... to do that even. No, you don't. You really don't. No. And so uh, uh, when, when it came to the end of the day, they knew this. We were not going to go away. I mean, I'm just telling you, there was no stone we left unturned. Um, <laughs> we started with a, uh, the first press conference to launch this to the world. Is We uh, asked online. We made a music video uh, uh, to the tune of 99 red balloons. We had 99 heart balloons because there's 99 members of the house, right? And so we said, you can send this to your members. And, you, you know, we put a tag on there to have a heart, you know, pass the heartbeat bill. And at the press conference, we had a room filled with 4,000 red mylar heart balloons and we delivered them to the state house by the end of the day there was no one in the state house who did not know about the heartbeat bill and so we we we, we, we launched this way um, then uh, when they we, we were moving to the Senate they said well you know we're not allowed to have balloons in the Senate we can't do that so that's all right Valentine's Day was our big day for the heartbeat bill and so we brought in 2200 roses and we delivered, that was the amount of babies the heartbeat bill would save every month. Um, and we put them in, in, in uh, bouquets of three because that's how many babies we would save every hour. And so we delivered those to the Senate. And, and then we, uh, I, I, I bought a, a three-story heart balloon. It's one of those great big outside, big, it's three stories high. And it says, pass the heartbeat bill. It's a great big heart. And my husband says, how do, how do we, how is, it, how is it possible? Yeah, how, how is it possible we don't even own one of these? <laughs> I own a six-foot rhino. We were, you know, we, we ended up, you know, we did, we did, Balloons, bumper stickers. We did billboards. We did, we did. Okay, a, a whole um, <laughs> in front of the state house. We had a clothesline full of baby clothes with the amount of babies seventy. The babies would the, the heartbeat bill would save every day, and every one had an attachment on it that said, you know, this is this is a do real. You come up with all these ideas on your own, or you know, do people you... say, how does this happen? Well, you know what? If you don't have creativity, then just ask the creator. He's pretty creative. He can give you these ideas. And so um, my husband saw a picture in your book about. Uh, You'd remember this, but about all of the people that were killed in the Civil War, et cetera, and comparing that to abortion, that's kind of in your face. It's it very is. Effective, uh, it sure. is because because uh, you know, as we, we this was in college. I, I I I just made this great big poster, and it had like the Revolutionary War is about three three quarters of an inch. Uh, the biggest one was the Civil War. We had you know ten inches worth. This one inch equals fifty thousand lives. But at that time, uh, in the eighties, we had a war on the unborn, and it was three stories high. Now, if we were to depict that visually, it would be bigger than the building. Um, we've got to do something different, and that's it. We're, we're, the heartbeat bill is a fresh, it's a new approach, it's a scientific solution to abortion, and, uh, and we do whatever it takes. And, and, and this is the key. There came a point where we, we got it through the House many times, but the Senate wouldn't budge. And we took out full-page ads. and My favorite was a cartoon. We did a cartoon. And um, <laughs> I met an animator at a film festival, and uh, and I said, "All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to make a cartoon showing uh, it's it's got these. It's one is this president of the Senate, one's the Speaker of the House, and one's the Governor, and they're all standing. And behind them is a school bus going off the cliff. A little cartoon school bus going off the cliff because it was a school bus full of children a day that the baby that the heartbeat bill would save. Hmm. I'm like, we've got all kinds of time. Yeah, what's the hurry? It's a stadium full of babies a year, and you see stadiums falling from the sky. And 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 so I I ran that on television uh, in this in this president of the Senate in his district. Um, and I remember uh, one of the one of the commercials. A buddy of mine says I, I was watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and and there's your commercial. And you know he may not be watching the parade, but his pro life mother was watching the parade, and a lot of their friends were watching the parade and he, they're going to call their buddy president of the senate keith faber and say you're telling us you're pro-life but but this car this cartoon says otherwise and uh the next thing you know we also ran it during the ohio state game because he was an ohio state alumni 
He's watching that game and the commercial's gonna come on for him and all his buddies, right? So you gotta get to where they're going, picketed them at their house. I mean, I was not a popular person. <laughs> People did not like me at all and I didn't care. I remember talking to my buddy, Mark Crutcher from Denton, Texas. He called me up and I, he goes, how's it going? I said, well, uh, they're blocking our bill. I can count my friends on one hand. Uh, they hate me down at the state house. He says, did you go down there to make friends? Did you go down to the state house to make friends? Did you go down there to end abortion? I went, I went down, going down there and abortion. It's not about photo ops. It's not about being liked. And, and you will be, you will not be liked when you, when you bust through the system, when you lead the charge against the, the establishment way that they've always done it. Um, but you want to know what? You know what's better than every photo op you can get? It's, uh, it's ending abortion and we're going to do it. Amen. You know, let me ask you a question. Are you just this type of a person naturally or how much of this do you attribute to the Lord and what God's raised you up to do? It's all the Lord. It's, it's 100% the Lord. I was the shy kid, afraid to give a speech. Um, but I saw the injustice of killing children. And, and, and so something, something's got to give. I either sit on the sidelines for the rest of my life and whine about it, or I, get, I suit up and get in the battle. You know, a lot of people don't realize we're in a battle. That's what mm -hmm. this armor is all about, right? They let fear guide their whole life. I mean, fear has killed, uh, has given more defeat than, than failure ever did. Um, Francis Schaeffer put it this way. He said, faith is, is not a leap in the dark. It's ceasing to call God a liar. Yeah, I like that. And part. that's it. That's it. God is everything he claims to be. And that's why I, I've got faith uh, that, that he is going to come through because we're doing his work. And I knew that he gave me this assignment. I knew that I was supposed to do the heartbeat bill even after it was beaten out of me for, you know, for a deck or more than a decade. I knew that we had to do it and we had to do it now. And I knew it was going to happen. I just didn't know how long it was going to take. I didn't know how hard it was going to be. Um, but I knew at the end of the day, we were going to see victory. And we did. So how long before you actually got it through the Ohio? Uh, we, uh, the idea came in November of 2010 uh, and it passed in 2019, April of 2019. So you count 10, it's, you know, and almost now a decade. it's gone beyond that, it's, uh, other states. It's other states. We've also introduced it in Congress. Um, at some point, I think it was the second, the second veto. No, the first veto. Like, man, we got to go over their heads. Uh, and so we went and introduced a bill, uh, inter it ran into Steve King. Uh, it was actually at Phyllis Schlafly's funeral. And I uh, saw him at the convention, talked to him about the heartbeat bill, sat next to him at the funeral. God orders our steps. Uh, and and pitched him the idea for the heartbeat bill, he and Louis Gohmert and uh, a handful of others. Uh, and we launched it. We had a handful of co-sponsors. But something in me, like, we just have a handful. That's not enough. And so I had a group on the phone, uh, Rochelle Heidelbaugh, Larry Serignano. I'm on the phone with them. I said, we need to pray for help. And this was my prayer. I said, God, who is it that we know that we're not thinking of that could help us? And it was like somebody whispered in my mind, Tom DeLay, the former majority leader, who was so effective that they went after him like they went after our President Trump. And, uh, and I called him up and, and he said yes. And I'm telling you, it was like night and day. Instead of trudge, you know, trudging uphill through the snow, we How were going. How do you contact Tom Delay? Well, I knew him from other battles and other fights, oh, and so we, you... were, we were. We uh, were. You realize I've been in, I've been in the cultural war for a long time, and we had worked together to try and stop the government surveillance at the NSA. We had worked together at tea parties, and and you know, I had met him over the years, and uh, and he took my call, and he and he said yes. This is one of the things that amazes me. Just a little bit of your book that I read was how you just pray and things happen. It's like, crazy like you that. You were talking about wanting to come up with the tune. Oh, yeah. Tell that story. Because... Okay, I'm not sure which one, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you the first one okay. was, was um, <laughs> it was 2002. I was national director of the Center for Reclaiming America and uh, they, were, they were going after kids in schools. So, you know, one kid had a Ten Commandment book covers. A teacher actually ripped it off and ripped it in front of the classroom. And I'm like, this isn't right. You know, something just, just rises up in you. We got to do something. And then Columbine happened and they were shooting people for saying, yes, I believe in God. Mm -hmm. And so I, I pitched this idea. I said, we need a yes, I believe in God kit. And we're going to put together, we're going to have 10 commandment book covers. And we're going to have a, a little gospel uh, uh, New Testament. And we're going to have, uh, we had a uh, wordless book bracelets. And we had, you know, all this stuff in this kit, right? I said, and we need a song. And they all looked at me like, oh yeah, Jim, we're going to have a song. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get some artist to do a Yes, I Believe in God song. And, and then that we can launch it on the, on, on the Coral Ridge Hour and it'll be great. And, and they all just looked at me like, yeah, I'm just nuts. And, uh, and so here's what I did. I didn't have an instrument. I, didn't, I had just moved to Florida and I, I had a piano phone. This is embarrassing. It was a phone that when you play the keys, it was like a toy piano. And it dialed it, you know, like, this is how you dial the phone. And so I, I called a friend of mine, uh, uh, Allison DeMarco, her husband, Romeo. They were very, very accomplished musicians. Seven in the morning, they meet in my office, and I said, we need to write a song, because my PR agent, uh, Barry Case, said that they need to have a sample song before we, we, we go to them. 
like, all right, well, we'll write a song. You ever written a song? No. And so I, I said, all right, here's what I'm thinking. Yes, I believe in God. I'm like, all right. And I started writing the lyrics and I said, I, went to, I was thinking something like this and I started playing it on the piano phone. And they looked at me like, I am a lunatic. And, and this guy, Romeo says, look, Jan, you know, I, I got up, I went through traffic, I'm a, I'm a musician, uh, and he, this is a piano phone. His wife says, oh, come on, Rome. He says, it'll be easy. We'll just, for the refrain, for the refrain we'll just hit redial. I mean, it was, it was that's the humble beginnings of the Yes, I Believe in God song that we pitched to Rebecca St. James. And so here we are pitching it to the, the uh, friend of mine says, we're, we're, there's a group meeting. I got you a meeting with the gospel, a former gospel music association president and another guy that's big in Nashville. I got you a meeting. And so we recorded a song on our lunch hour I borrow a cassette recorder. We meet in, in, in with these with these big wigs in Nashville, and I play the song. And they say, "Damn it, that little song of yours! I'd give it on a one to ten scale. I'd give it a seven. He thinks he's insulting me, right? But I'm like, this is great. Seven is great. We did it at our lunch hour. You know, somebody else with talent could actually take this and run with it, right? Oh, and wow. and so this is what they said to me. They said, Janet, your little idea of a song for you to launch your campaign is simply not going to happen. And so I, I'm not. I'm not dissuaded. I'm not, they, I'm undaunted, right? So the former president of the Gospel Music Association felt the need to clarify. And this is what he said. I still remember it to this day, like it was yesterday. He said, Janet, let me see if I can clarify this for you. My boss is there, the, the advisor for the, for the ministry. Everybody's there in this meeting. And he says, Janet, short of God appearing here himself, this simply will not happen. So I took out my pen. And I wrote in front of my, my little notebook and I said, what was that? And short of God appearing here himself, what, what, this is simply not going to happen. I said, I just want to make sure that when this happens, that I quote you right. And I still remember the call from a friend of mine who says, turn on 88.1 because yes, I believe in God by, by Grammy award winner, Rebecca St. James just went to number one. Wow. Um, this is what God can do. And wow. uh, later we ended up with a heartbeat song and a May Day song with, with Cindy Jacobs. We had a big prayer rally at the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, we prayed for eight hours for our country. Uh, and now we're seeing the answers to those prayers right now. That's awesome. I tell you, I believe this is encouraging people that praise God. If you just believe, yeah. all things are possible to him that believes. That's right. But you know, what, what happens to people is they get disappointed. And in, in that 10 years, uh, there was a, we had a meeting with a friend of mine, Sue Trambino, and she was, she was uh, with Women Impacting the Nation. She was showing us her office. And this was impossible. And look, God did this. And this was impossible. My husband's, he's, he kept nudging me. Like, who does this sound like? Sounds like you. But I realized I let 10 years of, of blasting into a stone wall, 10 years of failure. I, I wasn't like that. I used to be, tell me it's impossible and I'm going to show you what the God of the impossible would do. And he'd do it over and over and over again. Um, but I realized it just got beaten out of me. And I think that there's some people who have let disappointment seep in. And you've got to, you've got to realize that, 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 and I told my husband, I said, you know, I felt like I used to be like David, you know, that I take on Goliath. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dare defy the armies of the living God? And you know, I was, I felt like David, God blessed what I touched. And now I feel like Saul. I mean, what, the, what in the world? Nothing's working. He says, well, sometimes the impossible takes a little longer. And, uh, and that's it. You just, it's, it's going to happen. It's just, you're going to just, the, the victory comes to those who don't give up. So let me ask you about your husband, because you mentioned him a couple of times. What does he think? Because I'm sure that he gets criticized being married to you. Mm. I know that my wife, uh, she doesn't like all the criticism that comes towards me. How does this affect well, your husband? God orchestrated this because it was when we had moved back from Ohio. I, I, Ohio is my home state. I moved to Florida, met my husband, moved him back to Ohio. Poor boy never really saw snow. Uh, I mean, he just, it was, it was a hard thing for him. Um, <laughs> and uh, he looked at me one day. We just had just moved in the house. It was October 2010. And out of the heart, the mouth speaks. He just said, just nonchalantly, he said, you know, he know I've been involved in the pro-life movement, right to life. And he said, he says, why don't you outlaw abortion while we're here? And a uh, great woman of faith, I, I, you know, I said, I laughed at him. And I looked at my watch. I said, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm here for a few minutes. So we got some time. I might as well knock it out while I'm here. It, it, it seemed too impossible. But he's the guy that started. He put that seed in my heart. And it was a couple of weeks later when God gave me the idea again. that was rebirthed, the idea for the heartbeat bill. Man, that was powerful today. I tell you, Janet inspires me. This woman is strong. And uh, I believe that she's inspired you. I would like to encourage you to please get this product on Choose Life. Also, you can go to Janet's website. She's written books. She's got plays. She's in the process of producing a sitcom. She's just using everything she can to get the message out. And so listen to our announcer as he gives you some information. You will be blessed.
In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. The majority in cases from Texas and Georgia said that the decision to end a pregnancy during the first three months belongs to the woman and her doctor, not the government. Children! I heard tears from the Lord. He knit me together in my mother's womb. Before he formed me, he knew me. Before I was born, he sanctified me. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed back with the something unalienable rights. That in my knees are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Remember, it's my choice. It's our choice. It's a baby choice. It's God's choice. Not yours. Cheers, life. Oh, man. That's the baby? Wow. So that's really all going on right now. Yeah. It, it looks like an actual baby. Uh-huh. Today, you saw a portion of Andrew's interview with Janet Porter. To find out more about Janet, her ministry, or her new book titled A Heartbeat Away, go to faith2action.org. This week's interview with Janet Porter is available on a special Choose Life USB flash drive. Also included on this flash drive, you'll find many more interviews and testimonies relating to abortion. This Choose Life USB flash drive will be accompanied by the Observing All Things booklet that contains many statistics and scriptures with regard to abortion and other social issues. You can get these valuable resources for a gift of any amount when you contact us. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. You know, social media has become a big thing in most people's lives, but sad to say, a lot of it is really negative. Well, we've got some positive social media. I would like to encourage you to check out our social media, all of these different platforms. We've got a lot of good news to share, so check it out, our social media for Andrew Womack Ministries. When we talk about running with the Lord, this is part of it, is that you need to become absolutely dependent upon God. Men's Advance has always been really a time to reconnect with God. I mean, anytime you got a bunch of brothers coming together, that right there in itself is impactful. The Men's Advance particularly, it speaks very well to a man's soul and just really targets just areas that, that men need to be just encouraged in and refined in. We're all just here to grow. I guarantee that you'll get something out of it. Men's Advance makes you hungrier for God. As long as you got hunger for the Lord, you're gonna grow. No matter how old we get, no matter how much we may think we're behind, if we follow the best playbook ever written, we will overcome. 